All right, there's a lot of ways that we can teach um, integers, adding and subtracting, multiplying and dividing negative numbers, lots of different ways. There's the chip model. There's the balloons and sandbags model. There's the IOU money model. And there's just all these different models. In this series of videos, I'm gonna show you entirely how to teach integers the best way possible, which is using a number line. So let's get started. In this video, we're only going to do addition. And uh, so we're going to use that number line and we're going to define addition as first change plus the second change equals the sum. All right. And so that's the idea of this. And of course, you could do a third change and a fourth change. So you can add more than just two numbers. But today we're going to just do two numbers. First number plus a second number is equal to the sum. And that's how we're going to define addition. And that sum is really talking about where we end up. Where is our destination on that number line? All right. Okay, so let's, let's get started with a nice simple one. Okay, let's start with like first grade, three plus five equals what? All right. And so what we're going to want students to start to do is recognize somewhere on the number line is a zero. It could go anywhere. It doesn't have to be in the center. It could go in to the left or to the right. It doesn't have to be in the center. That's the key thing. And then what we're going to do is we're going to define that three plus five as a first change of three and then a second change of five. And then the answer is saying, where do we end up? And of course, in this case, we definitely end up at eight. And so our answer is eight. Nothing, nothing very revolutionary there. So let's just kind of keep going because we're going to use this model to understand uh, more tricky problems involving negatives. Okay. In fact, let's start that. So let's do negative eight plus negative five. So negative eight plus negative five, what is that gonna look like? Well, we're gonna draw our number line and negative eight plus negative five, and we could put zero anywhere on our number line. And negative eight plus negative five means, first we're gonna have a change of negative eight, which means we're gonna go to the left eight, and then we're gonna have a change of negative five, and then the big question is, where do we end up? All right. And of course, in this case, we're, we're going to end up at negative 13. The idea is we want students to be using an empty number line. We don't need them to be doing those literal intervals of one and count every interval of one. Although, uh, parents and teachers, if a student needs that, go ahead and give it to them. But really, we're going to want to be relying on this empty number line. And the reason for that is, that what if we have negative 80, 80 <laughs> plus negative, what was that? Negative 50. All right. So now the idea is, what would we do if we have a crazy problem like that? All right, so, well, we're going to still have a zero somewhere. We're still going to represent that first change of negative 80. And then we're going to have a second change of negative 50. And then the question is still, where are we going to end up? And, uh, and so uh, I got to tell you, the reason I love this empty number line instead of the chip model uh, is because in order to do a negative 80 plus negative 50 with the chip model, you would have to have um, an, uh, 130 <laughs> chips in order to really model that problem. And so with the number line system, we are able, we're able to model using an empty number line pretty much anything without too much difficulty. And of course, now on this question, where are we going to end up down here? Well, we're going to end up at, uh, oh, let's, let's do it in red, negative 130. And we're going to allow our students a lot of flexibility and opportunity to, to explain how it is they got that answer. Okay, so let's move on to slightly trickier problems. Now, we're going to go a little faster. 
Oh, let's do uh, negative. Uh, uh, let's do <laughs> negative 13 plus uh, 7. Okay, so negative 13 plus 7. Let's get our pen and let's draw our number line. So where are we going to put our zero? It doesn't matter. I'll put it right there. So first change plus second change equals destination. So what is our first change? Our first change is negative 13. So I'm gonna write it right there. And then we have our second change. Now our second change is going to be a seven. So we know it's gonna to go to the right. And the question is, is it gonna go all the way beyond the zero or is it gonna be short of the zero? And in this case, we're gonna help our students and we're gonna give our students plenty of opportunity to recognize that it's gonna be short of the zero. And so the big question, dot, 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 where do we end up, all right? So if we went to the left 13 and then we go to the right seven, the question is where do we end up? How much further below the zero are we at, and in, of course, in this case, we are at negative six. All right, so our answer is negative six. Let's do a, a kind of a related problem. We'll do it on this same screen here. Uh, if we do negative 13 plus uh, 25, all right, what is that going to look like? Well, we're gonna make our number line. Here's our number line. And so where, where does zero go? It can go anywhere, it doesn't matter. So I'll put zero there. And that negative 13, that's our first change. So where does that first change go? It's gonna to go to the left, 13. So there it is, to the left, 13. And then our second change is to the right, 25. So there's our second change and it's gonna to go to the right, 25. Now, is it going to go past the zero? Yes, because 25 is greater than these 13 spaces that we are away from zero. So it's going to go these 13 and then some past the zero. Oh, so let's do it in green. It doesn't really matter what color I use. In fact, I don't even have to use color. So there's enough plus there. And I'm going to say that's good enough to represent the 25. So now the big question is, What's our destination? Where did we end up? So parents and teachers, at this point, we're gonna let our students really grapple and think about where, where did we end up? And those students who need to literally draw those individual unit intervals, they're welcome to. If students are able to use some sort of logic, we wanna encourage them to share their thinking with all their colleagues. All right, and so, of course, in this case, we know that the answer is 12. We end up on the positive side of the number line and in fact we end up at 12 on that number line. Okay now let's just do a couple last ones for addition because I just I just I can't stop I'm having so much fun. So let's do um, oh positive 52 plus a negative 35. Uh, All right so uh, let's get going with that. I don't know what that was about. Um, so anyway, so th positive 52 plus a negative 35. So let's draw our number line. There is our number line. And oh, let's just put a zero right here. There's our zero. And so positive 52 means it's gonna go to the right 52. And I'll label it 52 there. So we just went to the right 52. Now our second change, our second change is negative 35. So it means we're gonna go to the left. Now are we gonna go beyond the zero? No, we're not because 52 is bigger than the 35 to the left that we're gonna go. So we're gonna go to the left 35, but we're still gonna end up on the positive side. So let's just use a different color and I'll say, okay, there we go. There's our negative 35 to the left. I don't know exactly where we are, 
but I definitely know we are on the positive side. And at this point, ladies and gentlemen, we're just gonna let our students grapple and think about what is a nice, quick, efficient way of identifying where we end up. And of course, at some point, we're gonna have students recognize, oh, I could do 52 minus that 35, and I will get 17. Oh, that tells me we're gonna end up and I can erase that and put in a 17, loud and proud. Put in that 17 because we ended up at the 17 on the positive side of the number line. Let's just do one last example down here. Uh, <clears throat> let's do, um, now again, you notice I used intentionally, I used big numbers. And the reason I'm using big numbers is to really demonstrate there's no way we would ever expect students to use literal chips to do this. In fact, so that chip model really starts to fall apart really soon. And so we want to really just avoid the chip model and all these other metaphors and just go straight to the number line model because it's highly, highly effective and it's very flexible with both small and large numbers. All right, so let's do one last one. Oh, let's do um, uh, 34 plus negative 51. Okay, so again, what does that mean? Well, that means we're gonna to go to the right, 34, and then we're going to go to the left, 51. Does it matter where we put our zero? Not one bit. So there's my zero. We're gonna begin by going to the right, 34, and then we're gonna to go to the left, 51. Now, because 51, because we went to the right, 34, and now we're, have, we're supposed to go to the left, 51 and because 51 is greater than 34 we know we're going to end up on the negative side so let's do that so let's just draw and there's our second change of negative 51 or 51 to the left we know we ended up on the negative side what's our destination where did we end up and we're going to allow students the time to think hmm let's see if i went to the right 34 and if I go to the left 34, I'm right back at zero. And I wanna see how much more I need to go to the left. So a nice kind of efficient thing to do is to subtract 51 minus 34. Oh, I got the same answer. That was totally accidental. Okay, um, I get 17. So we now know our answer is going to be, but not 17, it's gonna be negative 17 because visually speaking, we can see we are on the left side. All right, and that wraps up the addition of negative numbers using a number line. And really we're defining, uh, we're defining addition as first change plus second change equals the sum or equals the destination. It's right there and when we do that, when we recognize, and all we have to do is define that. We don't have to teach rules, we don't have to teach anything fancy, just first change plus second change equals the sum, which is indicated by the destination. In our next vid videos, we're gonna be talking about subtraction and how we can take this definition of addition, first change plus second change equals sum, and the number lines, and we're gonna modify that just a twinge to help students develop a deep understanding of subtraction. So there you go.